All right, everyone, uh, I will get started with my next talk, which is, as it says, they're creating custom title bars and VCL apps. And so uh, let me go ahead and start this. So one of the new features uh, that were added into the VCL in 10.4 was this ability to support custom title bars. Uh, and we have a classic example of seeing that is inside of uh, Delphi's IDE itself. So the desktop management and the other pieces that are up in that window, they, they're, Embarcadero created a VCL control to allow us to do in our own applications. But it's actually broken up into two different components. And we'll look dive in deep in both of these because the help is, is actually pretty decent to get you started. But there's a number of things that we, once you kind of uncover it a little bit and dig a little bit deeper and try to mimic certain interfaces, uh, you might run into some challenges. So we're going to start with an overview of the core functionality. So we're gonna look at this custom title bar property that was added to the T form class. We'll then look at the uh, coordinating corresponding control called the T title bar panel, which is what we use to kind of take it to the next level, to do a little bit more work with our customizations. And I have plenty of examples. And when I was putting this topic together, I kind of came up with, you know, I wanted some design challenges. Like, okay, if I wanted to mimic a very popular word processor, maybe what would I need to do in order to do that? So I created phrase. Um, you probably get where I'm going with that. And so we're gonna take a look at that. We'll show the original and my kind of mock-up version that demonstrates some of the core UI elements that Microsoft Word has in their title bar and how in my phrase app, I do the same thing. And then we create bronze, which is my version of Chrome's web browser, uh, just the tabs really, but it's quite interesting to see how that is different and how we get kind of challenged with some certain things without having to do a little bit of custom coding to take it to the next level. Uh, and then my final example is, um, I call it Code Tree. It's based on Source Tree, which is a very popular uh, Git GUI client, uh, one of the I use, so I'm very familiar with it. And the, each one of these offers a different type of customization in the title bar that we're going to dig into and see what, uh, how we can mimic that. So what can we do with a custom title bar? Well quite a bit actually uh, with certain constraints added in but quite a bit we can hide and show the the window icon and the caption which is nice because sometimes you may need the caption sometimes you don't like chrome does not show a caption you just know it's chrome based on the style uh, same thing with the window icon that's in the upper left we can place vcl controls on the title bar we can custom paint inside that title bar. We can even add additional buttons next to the standard system buttons that you see in the, the, the main title bar. Um, I have examples of all of these. We're gonna take a look to see which ones make sense, which ones, what features each one gives us. So a couple guidelines, requirements that we need when we're using this. It, do, it is supported on Windows 7 and later. Um, <laughs> Technically, it is supported on Windows 8, but I don't know if anybody is still using Windows 8. Nobody should be using Windows 8, but technically it's there. But because of some of the changes that were made in the low-level uh, desktop window manager and the arrow interface and what they were doing and trying to switching away from the glass effect in Windows 7 causes some odd results in Windows 8. But again, that's the last I'm gonna talk about that because everybody should be using Windows 10, if not Windows uh, 7. Um, one important aspect is it is using the real title bar that's in your app. It is not changing your border to be, you know, borderless and having no border and mimicking a title bar. It is a true Windows title bar, so it implicitly knows how to be dragged around the desktop. It knows how to handle, you know, it's it's an extension of the non-client area, and everything comes in uh, that we would expect from a standard Windows title bar. Uh, theming based on the different 
different uh, versions that you're running. Um, it does rely on the desktop window manager being enabled. Uh, in seven, this is the arrow interface. If you're on Windows 10, this, the DWM has to be enabled. You, if you disable it, like if you have an environment where that's disabled, then any customizations that you make will not be applied. Uh, so it does gradual, uh, it gracefully exits if it's not supported. I had touched on, I mentioned the non-client area. One of the areas is that uh, the, the, way it impl the way it is implemented is to extend the frame of the window into the non-client area, uh, which is a very odd way of calling it because the frame is technically part of the non-client area back in the day. And so they've extended it. Uh, what they're really meaning, it's not into it. They're basically taking the frame and making it bigger because the client area uh, of the window is different than the non-client area. So they're extending it into your normal space, which is why we're able to drop controls down onto it and so forth. What is interesting, one restriction, and we will talk about this toward the end, is that because it is using this approach and it's using the non-client area, anything that interacts with the non-client as well will collide with it and it will be not compatible. The most important example of this is the team main menu. So if you have a team main menu and you're using and you want to put a custom title bar in there, then what happens? Well, if you do, it won't work. It doesn't show up correctly at all. Fortunately, there is a way to work around this, and I show an example with the last uh, design challenge uh, to do that. So a couple guidelines with respect to, when we get to the part of dropping controls down, um, there's two things that are of concern. One is things we drop inside this custom title bar area, and the other is what about the controls that we drop onto our form? because since the title bar is kind of encroaching down into that space, the abs any absolute positioning that you use will still be put in its absolute positioning. So it's possible that if you were to set a control to be at 1010 in the upper left corner and your custom title bar extends down in below that, you will overlap the title bar. Nothing, you know, th that's just the way that will work. Fortunately, we can get around that by using the align properties. So if you align something to the top, it will automatically adjust as the custom title bar increases in height, it will get pushed down. So if, if you do have a lot of controls that are just laid out onto the form and you want to put a custom title bar in there, it's recommended to drop a T panel down behind all of those and align client that panel and put all your controls inside of there. And you can use the structure pane inside the editor to drag things back into the panel so you don't have to worry about losing it, losing relationships, that works quite well. So to start, we're going to look just at the custom title bar properties. These are in T form. So any form that you open up at the designer and you click on the form itself and you look at the object inspector, you will see a new custom title bar property and it has sub properties. The first and most important is the enabled property. Nothing you change will have any impact unless you put enabled to be true. Once you do that, you can then make some various changes like changing the caption alignment. They've changed it from Windows 7 to Windows 10, for example. So on 10, it's to the left, it's centered on Windows 7. Uh, if you wanna make it back to centered, you can change that. Uh, quite simply, we, that's all you need to do is turn it to be enabled and change the caption alignment. You could hide it, you can show the icon, uh, and you can even change the height. If you wanted to make your title bar a little bit bigger, go right ahead. If you do, you do have to turn off the system height property. So system height will use whatever the system wants the height to be, because it could vary from windows to windows and font sizes to font sizes. So it figures that out. If you want to customize the height, you go ahead and, and turn off system height and give it your own height. 
there are a number of color properties that you can add in. Um, there's system colors. Again, this is another property kind of like system height. Do you want to use system colors? It defaults to true. If you want to change any of them, you need to, well, do two things. Uh, you need to uh, turn off system colors. You also need to drop a title bar panel onto the form and it's not enough to just drop it. You have to connect it to the custom title bar property using its control sub property. Once you do that, and I'll walk through each of the steps here, that you can then see the custom changes. Now, background color is obvious. It's the background color. Foreground color is really the font color or the outline color that's used for the standard Windows 10 buttons, um, so forth. And then if you are inactive, then meaning the window doesn't have the focus, these other colors will apply. Speaking of the system buttons, the ones in the upper right, those actually have corresponding color values, a little bit more granular because we can colorize the buttons themselves. We can also hover and have a different color show up when they're disabled or even when they're pressed. So again, we have access to all of those. In this case, we also have to turn off system buttons. Uh, I don't like the name. It actually should have been called system button colors to match with system colors and system height. System buttons to me suggest that I can turn off the system buttons, but I can't. That's They're just there. They're controlled by the settings in your form itself. There's system icons that you can turn, whether or not you turn off the minimize button, for example, or the maximize. All right, let's go. Uh, we've done enough talking with the slides. Let's take a look at some samples here. All right, so I've loaded up a little test. App. We've got some other apps that we'll come to, but this one is just a brand new empty little app. And what I wanted to show is if we go down to custom title bar, if we open that up, we get a bunch of properties. And I'm gonna make that bigger to show more of the things there. So everything that's in there is, is what I showed. Go and make this enabled. And what we will see is there's a little hash area up at the top that indicates that I am using a custom title bar now. And just to quickly show an example, let me go and change this to be centered. And I'm also going to change, uh, I'll take off the icon. Now, I'm not seeing any representation of this. I'll, I'll explain why in a sec, but at a minimum, this is what I would need to do to support that. So I've got my active app, let me go and run. And this comes up and my icon's gone and my title is centered into my window. So great, I've actually made some change to that. And it's a fully functional title bar as well. Now, where the real benefit is, and if I wanted to change the colors, I can change the height. Remember, I have to turn off system height. And if I wanted to make this say 60 and make it really big, this gets bigger to show me that visually. And if I go ahead and run this, then I will see that I have a large title bar and all of it's grabbable, which is nice. Not super interesting at this point, but it would be kind of neat to be able to see this at design time as well. Well, that's where if we go into the Windows 10 and we find the uh, title bar panel and we click on that and drop it on our form, it automatically gets put up into the top. Now you might be thinking that, oh, I've added my panel in, that's great. If you see this layout, if you see the hash marks separate from your panel, that tells you that you're missing one connection. You have to go to the custom title bar properties again, find the control, drop that down and pick your title bar panel. Once you do that, you get the visual representation of what you've changed, including all the colors and the showing of the captions and so forth inside your application. And so if I wanted to change this to sky blue for, oh, what did I not, what did I forget to do? I have to turn system colors off. 
and then pick my sky blue. Now it shows up, not necessarily the most effective, but you get the point. And so once this fires up, I've got a sky blue. Oh, my buttons are still the system colors. So that's when you have to go back to system colors, uh, system buttons, my mistake, because I think it should be system button colors. Turn that off. Now I can customize those and the button background color, I can make a different color or the same one. And now I get the effect that I'm looking for. So that's the kind of the basics of just getting started with a custom title bar. There's a lot more that we can do with it. So let's dig in to all of that. So one of the important aspects of having that title bar panel on it, a design surface, is that we can put other VCL controls onto it. The underlying requirement is that the VCL control needs to um, be able to support being painted on glass. The, the old Windows 7 arrow interface, anything that was supported. Now, a good number of controls do support that because it requires extra transparency support or fully opaqueness. It can be a challenge with certain controls that want to blend in with the background, and, and we'll see some examples of that in a, in a bit. But the tab bar or the title bar panel gives us the ability to host. It also provides advanced features for us, for example, custom painting that we can do if we wanted to paint something special onto uh, the title bar, we can certainly do that. Uh, that could also be hosting images that we want to put and, and so forth, uh, or uh, other buttons and other interactive elements. So when it comes to custom painting, then we need to uh, do a couple simple things. Drop the title bar panel on the form, of course. We need to write an event handler for the on paint event. And when we do that, we will need to use some properties to help us determine where do we want to write um, or what do we want to paint. Now, it, this can be helpful both in painting and in for design time positioning. Now, unfortunately, uh, so that you guys don't go chasing down a rabbit hole that leads to nowhere, like I did, is that if you use the client rect, the values are wrong. They're actually swapped. Uh, the width or the, the right value is actually the bottom and the bottom is actually the right, so they're switched. So if you know that, you can do it, but you can't just take it normally because things won't get positioned right. Or if you do a fill rectangle, it's only on the left side and so forth. But the other values are very important. So we know where the icon is being displayed. We know the size of the frame. We know the where the caption buttons right that to me is the most important because we don't want to put something over the system buttons that are up in the upper right now i wish it was a little bit better i'll explain in the code when we look at that but then when it comes to displaying anything or painting we we it is using a 32-bit pixel format meaning it has an alpha channel so it knows how to deal with transparencies and semi-transparencies uh, if you're going to display any additional text, it's recommended to use the draw text function that's built into the style manager, which means it will use the current style theme that's you know active and draw the text. Now, you can change the color. So if you are doing a complementary text element and background color to go with this particular theme or style, you can do that. But again, it does do the right text drawing and sets up the right flags so you don't have to worry about the clear text being displayed correctly and all the other things that go with it. There's also on the title bar panel the custom buttons collection. This is how we add additional buttons in the upper right next to the system buttons to provide some extra functionality. Now it's a weird little collection and collection items <laughs> uh, because when you create a new item, you can pick a button type, which sounds kind of interesting, but when you look at what the values are, it's the close, the minimize, and the restore, which 
makes no sense to use because you would never create an additional close, minimize, or restore button, but they're there because internally they're used by the, con the title bar panel. So that's why they're there. I just don't like the fact that they are there. I would have created a different enum and separated the two. They could be related, but I'd have them separate. Uh, the spacer sounds great. I was like, ooh, I really could put a spacer in amongst these buttons and it's not implemented at this point. So maybe in the future, but not right now, it won't do anything. So the only option you have is the default picking it as custom. And that's what we need. Um, but as we get through the details, it's a little bit limited because the only thing you can really do is set up the, um, the hint for it. What shows on it, you have to manage that. The size of it doesn't change, which is disappointing, even though there is a width property there, the width property doesn't get honored at this point. So, um, interesting, effective, but it's got some limitations. So, uh, oh yeah, here is my next page here. So they, we've got button type enabled, of course, to enable, disable it, the hint visible, they work. Uh, to do anything, you have to respond to the on click event, which is nice, but it would be kind of cool if it had an action, to be honest. Uh, the on paint is really important because there's no other way to show content on it. You have to custom paint each of your extra custom buttons. It would be nicer if I could connect the custom or the you know, the title bar panel component to an image list that I could then reference inside of the caption button item with an image index property. And then just centers the image into the button and I'm, I'm done, I'd be good to go. But now I have to write code to paint my buttons. So let's take a look at these all these concepts we've talked about in uh, my phrase application, my little word processor. And so back to here, uh, let me go and, well, I'll bring up Word to start with a new document to see what we're trying to mimic here. So we've got uh, some controls up here, some toolbar buttons with a very simple line style. We have a search bar in the middle. The title is actually, somewhere in the middle of all of this. It's not really centered. So we're gonna have to draw the title ourselves. I've got other controls in here that are more associated with the system buttons. So to mimic that, if we pull over to phrase here, here's where I've got our you know, Windows 10 control, our toggle switch, that's available. I've just got a regular label there. I've added a, a toolbar with tool buttons in there. Now for those, I was able to add in the images. And if we look at the images, I've added in the ones for um, that I'm adding up into here. Those are the ones at the end, but I'm also adding images that I wanna display over in the right. So I'm actually using the image list to manage all these. I'm just gonna use them to draw onto my button canvas when necessary. And, but you'll notice I have nothing else that's showing up in there at this point. So let's take a look at the code of what I do. So I've set up my caption. Again, this is not a word processor. It's just showing how the title bar works. But a couple key things that I wanted to show was, well, can I dynamically create controls that are on the title bar? And the answer is yes, you can create them just like you would normally create any runtime component. So I created instance of the search box, which automatically has the correct events and the icon for the magnifying glass for searching. I parent it to my title bar panel. I'm aligning it to the right. Now this should raise some eyebrows of people thinking, well, the right of this title bar are all the system buttons. How are you preventing that from happening? Well, I'm going to take care of that by establishing the margins that I want to use. So when I align with margins is true, then it will automatically adjust. And then I'm setting the width of my search box to be just 250, just an arbitrary value that I picked. Now, in order to calculate the width, 
it would be nice if I could just use the custom title bars caption button with, but I can't uh, because I know that I'm also adding in, I've, I've added them in, but they're not visible at design time. I've added the custom components to the, to the buttons. Let me go back to my title bar here and custom buttons. And if I open up my collection editor, I have the first one, which is the ribbon display options. And the second one is the my benefits. The order of these, the first one is to the far right. The second one is the next one and it builds going to the left. But since I know they're there and unfortunately the caption button rectangle does not accommodate those, I have to figure out how much width do my custom buttons take up, add that plus some padding and I set my margins to that. Once you do that, it's great. Now, speaking of those custom buttons, to paint each one, I have to have a separate paint event. I have it here. I could probably refactor this down to a standard function and I pass some parameters to it. I just haven't gone back and done that. But the intent is based on whether the form is active or not, because if we, when we toggle Word, Word's kind of interesting. If I have my new document in Word and I bring up another window, and we switch, the background color stays the same, but all the buttons and the text all dims. And so I wanted that a behavior as well. So I first check to see, okay, am I active or not? Based on that, I update the index and I figure out where do I want to display it. So this is just centering my X and Y so that it puts the image in the middle of my button. And I use the toolbar, uh, sorry, the image list to draw at that spot. I go and do the exact same thing for the custom buttons uh, for the second one. So different set of image indexes. Again, you can see how this could be easily refactored. Now the title bar itself uses the custom painting because I want the caption to be displayed, but it can't be just in the center because it will, be covered by my search bar because it takes up more room. So I have to control where do I want my text to be displayed. So I turn off the show caption and I'm going to draw it myself. So I've set up some flags so I can figure out which color to use for the text. So my custom title bar's foreground color, if I'm active, if I'm inactive, I use the inactive foreground color. Here's where I'm figuring out where to put my text. So I take the full client rectangle, the A rec that's passed in, and I start adjusting it. So I want my, you know, my toolbar is the furthest right thing on the left side of my display. And the search box left board, you know, left edge is the rightmost. So I figure that rectangle out. I update my formats set up some alignments and then use, as I said before, the style manager system style draw text to actually display the text. And that's the end of my code. So now let me activate my phrase application and give that a whirl. And we can see that that comes up. Here's my, my document text centered in the two areas. Here's my search box. My different buttons are here and I've, obviously can minimize that and so forth. My tool buttons, the toggles work, all that's in there. And then if I go and switch to my other app, you can see that it uh, dims everything down. Oh, got to do my uh, little gap for those should get dimmed as well. I'll leave that as an exercise for all of you. All right, let me switch over back. We'll look at the next design challenge. So this was to essentially mimic Chrome. And let's take a look and see what does uh, Chrome give us. Chrome's kind of interesting because it, um, it it puts the tabs right in the title bar with a couple things here, system items are there. Um, as I build more tabs, you can barely see them. This is one of those things in my previous session about tab controls. I talked about how Chrome deals with tabs. And I was like, well, can I mimic this in my custom title bar apps? 
So let's take a look to see what I ended up doing. So we'll switch over to bronze here and we'll patch this. And what we find is, so I've, I've dropped the title bar panel down. I've obviously connected it to my custom title bar inside the form. But if I look in, I don't have any custom buttons. You know, there's, there's nothing that's in there. Uh, the only thing that I've done is I've dropped this RZ tab control onto here. Now, I did try this with the T tab control. That's the Win32 control that's inside of the standard uh, packages. Uh, the problem with that is I'm, it does work, it does appear, but it's rather limited in its display capabilities. It always wants to show a content area. There's no, I just want to see the tabs because the content area is not in my title bar. It's going to be in the main client area of my application. And I don't want to extend one into the other because it's a container ship. It'll get clipped. So I can't do that. So in order for the bordering to look right, I needed to turn that off. And the RZ tab control gives me the options to do that. And actually, on top of that, I now want to be able to turn, you know, to change the style of the background tabs. And the only way to really do that in the T tab control is to use a VCL style. The problem with that is, is that the tab control doesn't like to be put onto glass because it doesn't know how to alpha channel the background of the tab. So this area ends up showing up always as white, um, even at runtime, which is not the UI effect that I'm going for. So let's take a look at the code in here of what's going on. So there's there's some event handlers and things I'm gonna talk about each of these, but it's going pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the things that I did is the, um, I've uh, set up a margin on my tab control for the web pages uh, so that at design time, it doesn't creep over, but it is, um, it's aligned to the bottom, which is what I want, but if I don't adjust it, it's gonna take all the way to the edge. So I've put in a margin on there automatically. Um, actually, this should work up. It's actually easier to see it like this. So my margin of 180. Uh, this, by the way, is the quick editor that's built into uh, the Delphi IDE. So if you're not used to that, find quick edit, and you can find some great little uh, tips and uh, features that make it easy to change. And it works both for VCL and FireMonkey forms. So I've set that up. Let me go back to the code. And now at runtime, I am fully adjusting the size of my control in case I were to add buttons to it and so forth. So I'm doing the same thing to adjust the margins. What I've needed to do is when I toggle from active to inactive, so I focus the form and I go to another app, I need to update my tab colors. So I created a helper function to go and do that, and then I, I force the repaint to occur. The update tab color simply goes through and changes a number of properties that are built into the RZ tab control to customize its UI. So it's nice that that's there. It changes up the colors so that when I go and toggle, everything gets picked up. Now, one of the things that I also wanted to be able to do is when you run in Chrome and you see that the unselected tabs, their text color is different. And inside of the RZ tab control, its default behavior is a little bit different. When you hover over it, it wants to use the focused or the highlighted text color, which doesn't really work in this case. So I'm forcing it to be the unselected color uh, for all of my background tabs. So as long as it's the tab index is my active tab. So any other tabs that are there that are not active get forced to be the unselected color. And then uh, this next painting routine is to handle the background color of the tab. So behind all the tabs, that needs to look like the regular title bar. And that is the background color and the inactive background color. And then I just fill that rectangle. The rest of it gets clipped by the control when I set handle to true. 
of the, I think we're getting close to the end here. Yeah, just a couple more. Uh, this one is for painting the tabs themselves. So that's one of the neat things. We have an event that we can trip in to customize the way the tabs look. So here I'm just erasing the tabs basically to just make it look like a background um, and fit in. Then the final piece is because I'm putting a control here that has empty space, the background, I actually want that to be clickable to be able to be dragged. So if I don't, then I have to find the one area of the title bar that doesn't doesn't get overlapped with a control in order to move it. So I've activated it. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. And so, you know, it's not exact, but it gets as close to what we're we're looking at. And I'll bring this back over so that when I focus another app, everything gets back. I can click and change and it works just like a regular tab. We even have the drop down menu. Um, this is what I was talking about when I drag in this. This is part of the tab control, but I want it to be like the title bar. So this is an example of how to mimic that effect. And the separators, that's what's drawn in, in the tab drawing code. And so this is figuring out that do I need the separator? I only need it if I'm not adjacent to my active tab. All right. We got one more design sample to cover. And that is uh, what I call code tree, a uh, little soft uh, source code repository. And this is when I, I mentioned before early on how we can't use a T title bar in a main form uh, with, or see, sorry, a T main menu in a main form using a custom title bar because they collide. They both want to use the non client area. So in order to get around that, we need to use a different method to do the menus. So let's go back to uh, Delphi here. We'll go to code tree, let me activate that. And source tree, if you've never seen it, um, it looks very similar to that. Not quite as uh, you know, blue and white at uh, design time, but let me fire this up real quick. And it's got, um, and I'm not going to worry about that now, but it's got a menu up in the title bar with its program icon. It's got tabs that are in the client area. So it's not part of the title bar like it is for Chrome. It doesn't need to be, but the menus are in the title bar. That's the key thing with this app. So that's what I wanted to you know, figure out. How do, do we do that? Well, the way to do that is to actually use the action menu bar and the action manager as opposed to a T main menu. So if we look at this, we'll click on this. It's actually easier to, let me drop this down a little bit more. We have our action bars and then there's an action main menu bar. And so by creating that and adding the items inside of those action bars, the action bar is a control that can be put onto our title bar. And so I'm not going to go through how, you know, this is just creating the action bar items. You can go through and go into the manager and get all of the items that gets created if you want. Um, what I want to see is from the title bar's point of view, what do we do? And so not a whole lot. Most of the code is the menu items that make it up. And down in here, uh, two things that you do need to want to remember is that we need to set this is counter, totally counter uh, counterintuitive. You have to set double buffer to true so that it doesn't flicker like crazy when you resize the window. But you also have to set transparent to false. This is so counterintuitive because for the longest time I kept having a dis display artifacts and couldn't figure out why. And the reason is because I had transparent set to true, which is what I expected it to have to be, but it doesn't, it needs to be false. And then once you set that up, then it paints correctly. Now, what I have in here for painting is, um, this is really just to force the paint to be the same color all the time. Uh, that's really what, that's what Source Tree does. It doesn't toggle from blue to darker blue or lighter blue or whatnot. It's the same color. So I'm just forcing that to happen uh, whenever it needs to be painted. Likewise, I capture um, 
the uh, oh uh, this is a help this is not part of the title bar this is the page control that's below the title bar but because it has the same background color it looks like it's an extension of the title bar so I'll show what that does when I run this So as you can see, it does look like I have a big title bar here, but this page control goes over the whole edge. So my menus do work just like I would expect them to. This is just an image, nothing fancy about that. The system buttons still all work by default. And here, because I added that code to do the dragging, if I click over in here, it does drag. So I don't have to be just at the top. I can be down in, in here. All right, that was a lot of information. I hope um, you picked up some good tips and understanding of how these controls uh, work. Uh, I, we've got some time to answer any questions. I'll, I'll look at the chats and we'll do the live Q&A with, with Jim in just a few seconds. But thank you everyone for attending and I hope you enjoy the rest of DelphiCon 2021. Thank you very much. Hey, and I kept getting distracted by your session. <laughs> uh, no good, no good stuff. At one question I had, and I didn't, if you did it and I missed it, I apologize, but I saw you doing the, the Chrome, like the tabs in the, uh, in the, in the title bar area. Yes. Did yes. you ha implement the ability to drag the tabs? Is that, uh, it, it yes, the tab dragging is in the the TRZ tab control. Now I that's a good question. I did not try that. If um, if it worked on the glass, I think it should. But let me go back. We can check that easy enough. Allow tab dragging to true. Ooh, live demo, making a change. I have not tried this, but <laughs> we will see. So if I grab this, ah, no, because it's getting intercepted by the title bar area. It handles the click, but it's not letting me do a drag because it wants to do a window. I will look into seeing if there's a way to hook into that and let that go through if I'm on a tab index. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I did some work a long time ago where I did custom, I got rid of the title bar and did my own custom hit area for the dragging and stuff. And that was the problem I had is trying to differentiate whether I wanted to drag something else. So I was curious. Yeah. Um, the, where can people get your samples? Uh, they are, well, let me go back. We'll stop all this. That's a good question. I will be uploading the latest version of the, these examples uh, later today at my uh, Delphi by Design blog in the download section. And if you want to send them over to uh, us as well, we'll get them posted on the website. Delphi sure. site too. Absolutely. Uh, most of the comments here are like, wow, this is so good. <laughs> um, so is the custom title bar, is that a Windows only thing or is that available on other platforms? Uh, it's a Windows only thing um, and, and for VCL only as well, because it's, um, it's specifically hooking into the desktop window manager that's a Windows specific and so forth at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You well. So you, I guess what you can do some of that. There's the status bar on mobile apps. Yeah, it gets interesting. <laughs> You'd have yeah, well, to address it, each other platform. But 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 I would not go down that road for mobile apps. Um, there's already tab control functionality that fits with the platform to do that. So you really, I would highly not recommend going down and trying to customize the tab content area or the title bar area. There's so minimal of the space anyway, 
um, you're better off just like making a full screen app that doesn't have a title bar in the traditional sense in that case. Now, if you're talking about right. like on the Mac and other things, well, you don't really have the same, there's other techniques to do for the Mac side. Uh, so I would expect a different kind of control a little bit to do the equivalent for a cross-platform FMX ability, not necessarily the same approach here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the way Delphi gives us this cross-platform functionality, but there are frequently times where you really need to think about each platform and addressing each platform its own in its own way and stuff. So, um, with a T main menu, is the issue you can't place one inside the title bar, or can you have one below the title bar? Well, the T main menu hooks into the non-client area and 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 snaps it up right below the title bar. So you don't you can't really position where the T main menu item goes, which is the problem. So you just can't use it? You just can't use it. You can try to so use it. It's, a... it's very entertaining when you drop it on and you have your custom title bar and you're like, well, where's my menus? They're not there. Yeah, I tried that too. It didn't work. <laughs> uh, what is the best approach to customize the title bar of a form that uses a custom style while preserving the styled look of the entire form? So th th that's a great question because one of the things, I, I didn't really have enough time to go into some of that. Um, th this was kind of to show what you can do, but uh, qu quite detailed, but really there's some other considerations that you want to think about when you're really going to take this to the next level. One, you're very rarely ever gonna use absolute colors in the color properties of the custom title bar. The reason for that is on Windows, you can you can run in a light and a dark theme color. Now, the system color values will give you the right value, but if you make it yellow, then it's always going to be yellow. Now, if you want to make, and then if you're going to go with a system style, then it depends on the style you're using. If it's set up correctly, then you will pick up the right colors. But if you if it doesn't, then you might need to go after and create system complementary colors by using the, the 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 current system style and various functions and methods in there in order to do that. Uh, that's what the RZ tab control does to do its painting is that it looks at the active style and gets complementary colors because not everything has a direct VCL style element value for it. So if we don't have one, then we pick it up and figure out what it needs to, to be close to that. The other thing going along with styles is uh, font sizes and things. So if you're doing any display text on your screen, you're going to want, and, and you're on 10.4 or higher that's got high DPI support and you're using per monitor V2, you know, in your manifest. So you get notified that you've got a high resolution window, then you're going to want to use the um, uh, the current PPI value, which is the pixels per inch value to scale your font sizes appropriately for the monitor your form is running on. Yeah. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Sorry. I'm trying to read at the same time here. <laughs> uh, there's a question here about the search bar. How did like uh, Rad Studio has a search bar in the title bar? If so you can do that in uh, as well. Yes. In the uh, in the the uh, phrase demo app, I actually have a search bar up in there. So you can place one down and there's events to hook into. So when the user hits enter or clicks the magnifying glass, that's a built-in control in the Windows 10 tab in the component palette. Now, what, what you want to do when they do the search, that is completely up to you. Yeah. So if someone's asking about Windows 11, about doing this in Windows 11, if that changes any of the way that the title bar behaves? I do not believe so. So I did test the the custom title bar in Windows 11, and 
it the, the Windows 11 does have the curved corners, but you can disable those curved corners and they uh, but even if you don't disable them, they curve such a small amount it doesn't really impact mm. your title bar. If if you're trying to if it's really important that those pixels are right there in the corner, then <laughs> then yeah, it could be an issue, but Oh, well, sounds like there might be, need to be an update for the Windows 11 and you can obviously figure that out and Windows is using the desktop window manager to do all of the management, the display of all of that. So I'm I'm sure that it's it's possible and just a you know a, a theming thing that needs to be addressed. Yeah, it it, it I, everything I tested it was fine, but I could see how you you know some people might have certain situations where they want to have something different. And there's an API call to turn off the corner rounding if you don't want that. Um. So here's a question: Can you paint a image or design behind the bar and buttons, like Office 365 does, where you can have like some sort of pattern that is across all of the background there? Uh, yes, you sh you certainly should. You can paint over the whole title bar area. Um, what I don't, yeah, I think it's gonna, it would paint that first and the button should show up on top of that. So I know what you're talking about. It looks kind of like the, uh, the, the title of the slide here and have the system buttons behind it. So you would see that and then you'd still be able to highlight that. Yeah, because the control positioning, the Z order of the controls is on top of them, but the painting is behind it. Yeah, that should work. Cool. Um, so JD Hildebrand wanted to know that he's logged in from his home in Belgrade, Serbia to see your session here. Oh, nice. Uh, there were a couple uh, of people from Brazil on the previous one, so nice international yeah. crowd. Welcome everyone. Yeah. So there's a question here, I'm trying to follow it. A problem with height and align or anchoring with maximizing the speed button. I'm not sure I understand what the problem is. Are you aware of anything that about maximizing anchoring, like resizing or something in the? Well, it, it depends on, so I'm just kind of interpolating based on historically what I've seen is if they're using anchors or are they using the align property? Now, the anchors are very cool. They show very well, but I will be honest, I've never been a real big fan of anchors. And the reason for that is when you are designing your form and you set up anchors and you make an adjustment, the anchor forces things to change and usually unexpected. Once you're set and you have everything where you want it to be and then you establish your anchors, that's great. But when you come into dynamically creating things or changing things, the, the anchors get applied not necessarily when you think they should. So I personally tend to rely on alignments and container ships to force uh, and create the responsive UIs in my, my VCL app. So I'll use a container that automatically gives me content like splitters and size panels or page controls and so forth, toolbars, et cetera. And if it's something outside of that, then I will put, you know, uh, well, I, I like using the TRZ panel, for example, because I can get rid of the border completely. I can make it transparent. I can put, get rid of the, you know, caption and all these other things that you can do that you don't really can do on a regular panel. But um, that's to me what I tend to like to to manage my content. So that was all I would say is if it's anchors and it's things are changing unexpectedly, it could be a sequencing problem. Yeah, that, uh, one of the things I love about Delphi actually is that there's usually there's like some really easy ways to do things, but then you know sometimes they don't work in every situation. But there's still always another way to do it where you can have more control, you know. And 
it, it scales with you very nicely in that regard. And a lot of people from all over the world commenting, saying that where they're from, Hungary, Canada, Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's sweet. Awesome. Uh, I wasn't sure if you knew who JD was, so. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go way back. Is it possible to use direct X to draw on the title bar so rendering will be uh, placed in the video card? Uh, I don't know about direct X. I haven't tried that, but uh, GDI plus will work. Um, the the actually, the, <laughs> I, I don't necessarily, the sample app that comes with Rad Studio to show how this works while, while pretty basic, uh, the most interesting thing about it is that it, uses a, a GDI canvas wrapper around the canvas that you get in the paint event in order to draw rounded circles in a new system button. And that gives you better anti-aliasing support so that the buttons, the round circles look like circles and not pixelated as much. So it's possible that you could do direct X in there, but I, I don't have any experience in doing that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Well, we have another session starting with Bruno and his thriller building a web app in Delphi in five days. All right. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Embarcadero, for hosting this again. Great conference. And everyone who attended, enjoy the rest of Delphi uh, Con 2021. And I hope to see you guys online. Reach out to me for, with emails for any questions we weren't able to answer. Happy to do so. Great. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, everybody.